Hi, this is Brennan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and today I'm talking about contested roles in Righteous Blood Ruthless Blades. I was asked about this recently. The subject of ties came up, uh, both for turn order and um, you know regular roles, but particularly for contested roles. Um, I should clarify that it is just me, Brendan, talking today, so um, I don't know if Jeremy would have a different opinion on this. Um, the way the rules are written is there's sort of a rulings over rules approach where the idea is the GM would interpret ambiguity in the rules and make a ruling on that. Um, so on, on opposed skill roles, it doesn't specify what happens in, a, um, in, a, in the event of a tie. The way that I've always handled ties in the network system, for the most part, is on, on, on opposed roles is that neither side gains ground. Um, an opposed role is usually used for situations like races and chases, where you have two characters either racing each other or one is chasing the other. And you would have each of them make a speed roll. And whoever gets the higher number, that person gains ground, essentially, in that sort of a situation. Another example might be an arm wrestling match where you would call for opposed muscle rolls, and you'd have each player make a muscle roll. And the person who wins, wins the, mus the, the, the arm wrestling match. Uh, in the case of a tie, you would just simply have them, neither of them win. Um, you know, they're, 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 they're still locked in, in a struggle to win the arm wrestling match. And that is generally how I approach contested roles in general. Um, so, again, you know, the, the, the rule book doesn't quite specify. This is not me saying that you have to handle it this way, but I'm, uh, this is me telling you, how I handle it um, and how I handle it in Aggregate. Um, you know, uh, again, w one of the things that we were striving for when we, when we wrote the system was for there to be less lookup and for it not to be the kind of game where you are looking at a rule and then you have to find all the different minutiae of the rule and all, every situation is sort of spelled out. Um, the downside of that is the GM does have to sort of figure it out uh, or, you know, uh, come up with the uh, solution that's in the spirit of the text. Um, but yeah, so again, opposed roles, you know, again, there, there are probably cases where this might not 100% be the case, but in virtually every case I can think of, I always treat a tie as neither side gains ground or neither side wins. It's sort of, you're still locked in whatever struggle you're in. Um, and when I deal with opposed roles and things like races and chases, I'm pretty fluid with how I deal with that because I want to. I, I, I kind of want to have the rules help establish what's unfolding as the race is happening. Uh, an example of a nice rooftop chase is um, the the scene in Wuxia with Donnie Yen, sometimes called Dragon, with him and Kara Huai running on the, um, on the rooftops. And I feel like in a situation like that, the obstacles that emerge and things like that, those can be things that you would introduce as the GM on certain skill roll results, you know, like somebody rolls really low or something. Um, and and I think that uh, the general principle, though, is the opposed role really kind of sets how much, how much, uh, how f either far ahead the person who's uh, in the lead is getting or how close the person in the rear is getting. And generally, I kind of use a rule of three when I'm doing it, where I... I figure it usually takes about three rolls for a person to catch up unless they were like considerably behind or a lot closer from this from the get-go but that's just my personal preference um so i'm going to be back on here again i know this was a very short one but there really wasn't much to cover <laughs> just opposed rolls um i'm going to try to cover a lot of stuff from ogre gate and some things from righteous blood um these are going to mostly be me just kind of answering questions off the cuff so one thing i would say is don't treat these as like official codified rules um the you know i i i've I, I have a bunch of games that i've done i've done righteous blood ruthless blades i've done strange tales of song ling i've done wandering heroes of ogre gate we have a bunch of uh rule systems that lead up to ogre gate in different iterations so you have satorius you have servants of gaius you have terror network there are minor changes in each of those up until Satorius, where the game really kind of expands. And then Ogregate continues with the Satorius sort of principles intact, but there's still changes. And then Strange Tales really strips it down. And Righteous Blood, Ruthless Blades is um, like a medium light version of it. But it, it retains a lot of the um, 
sculpting that happened when we were working on Strange Tales of Song Ling. And I, I say all this just to sort of clarify that, you know, there's a lot of games. And so um, I get confused sometimes myself. <laughs> so I don't want people listening to this and just assuming that it's 100%. You know, this is a decree that you have to follow. Uh, also, the longer I play these games, I adjust how I play them. There's a certain amount of drift that starts to happen. And I always try to go back to the rules and keep with them. But sometimes I don't want to stick with a book that was written in 2016, say, in the case of Ogre Gate. Um, you know, it might have been before that. But whenever that book came out, uh, my attitudes about how I want to run it have changed. And if I put out a revised version, it would probably more reflect how I tend to run it right now. Um so when I answer the questions, I'm going to look up the rule and try to give the best answer I can. But just keep in mind, these answers are generally reflecting how I play the games now. Um, so yeah, so I have to head out. But I, again, this is the second episode of this. If you have any rules questions or setting questions or anything, feel free to send them to me. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I think the next one I have coming up, I know it has to do with Ogre Gate, but I can't remember what the question was. But there's a, there was a specific question I got about Ogre Gate that I'll be answering. And until next time, I will talk to you later.